In Lightning version 0.9, we've introduced the concept of the data module. Data modules are a way to decouple the data-related hooks from your Lightning module so that your model can become dataset agnostic. So what does that mean? Let's say you have an image classification model you've been working on. You're excited about it, it's working great on one data set, and now you want to try it on another data set, or maybe multiple data sets. Data modules make it easy to hot swap different data sets with your model so you can test it and benchmark it across domains. Today, we'll look at a Lightning module that has hard-coded some things about the MNIST data set. And what we'll do is we'll split that into two pieces. One will be the MNIST data module, and another will be a data set agnostic model that can take in any data module that we'd like. So jumping right in, after you do these imports here, we can come down and take a look at this lit MNIST model that we have. We have a few attributes coming in. A couple of them are data related, like data dirt and batch size, but other ones are just model specific, like hidden size and the learning rate. Uh, we assign these to the model, and then we declare some data set specific things here. We hard code them. So we have the number of classes, which is used in the last layer of the model that we define. And then we also have the input dimensions, which are used to initialize the first layer of the model that we define. From there, um, it's just you know generic PyTorch Lightning stuff where we're configuring our optimizer. We have a forward step. We have a training step, which returns the training loss. And we have a validation step, which returns the validation loss and the validation accuracy. From there, we also have the data-related hooks that I mentioned earlier. Prepare data, which is used to download data set to disk. Setup, which is used to kind of load that data in into a PyTorch data set. And then the loaders, which are used to basically return an instance of a data loader that has been initialized using one of the data sets that we made into the setup step. As a sanity check, let's go ahead and run this model as is. So to do that, we're just going to initialize the model. Model equals lit MNIST. Uh, we're going to initialize trainer, and then we're going to call trainer.fit. So if we run this and we see that it works, we know that our model is working as intended for now. And now what we want to do is we want to make this better. We want to separate out the data set related stuff into a data module, and we want to um, separate out the model itself into its own object that can take in any data set. So let's do that. First, I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to say class MNIST data module. And it's going to inherit from pl.lightning data module. And for now, I'm going to leave that. And then we're also going to have the class lit model. We can call it lit model now because it's not tethered to the MNIST data set. And that's going to inherit from pl.lightning module. Now what we can do is we can copy some stuff from the model we had earlier. So first, we'll grab the data-related things. So we'll just grab everything up into the model here. And we'll paste that. And next, we'll grab those data-related hooks that we talked about. So I'm just going to copy those into our data module. Boom. Now, uh, we have our data module. That's it. Uh, one thing I will change is I'm going to say, instead of saying it like this, I'm going to say self.dims uh, equals that, because when you set self.dims, uh, the data module will return these dimensions if you call dm.size. And you can index it just like you would a torch tensor, which is pretty cool. Oh, actually, one more thing we want to do. Let's remove these model-specific things from here. OK, now we're good. So OK, let's go back up and grab the model-related things. So that's going to be all of our steps and the model that we defined. So we'll grab everything for now, and we'll cut some things out. So I'm just going to paste that. And now what we can do is we can remove these data set specific things that we hard coded earlier. First, we'll remove these guys. And then what we can do is actually remove this as well. Uh, just know that our model is looking for num classes as well as these input dimensions in order to configure the model that we make here. So what we need to do is we're going to add these as uh, init args. So we'll say channels, height, width, and uh, num classes here. And then we can remove all of this, because that transform is defined inside the data module that we made. So now I think everything's looking good. And we can give this a shot. So let's make sure we ran this. And we ran this, and it works. Now let's go ahead and run this cell, which is going to initialize our data module. Um, as, a, as you can see, if you call dm.size, you'll get those um, dimensions back. That's cool. If we initialize our model, we can say lit model. And we can pass star dm.size, which will unpack those three things into 
those three um, sizes into our init args, just like that. So those three things right there. And then we just have to pass num classes. So actually, let's go up to our data module and make sure we did this. Yeah. So we have to make sure that num classes is going to be a class attribute. So we'll say self.num classes there. And now, what we can do is also pass dm.num classes. And then, just as we did before, we can initialize a trainer and then call .fit. So let's grab that from earlier and then paste that here. The only difference is here that when you have a data module is you're also going to pass the data module when you call .fit. So we're just going to pass dm right there. And if all goes according to plan, this will work. Great. So now our model is completely separated from the MNIST uh, data set and can work on any data set that we'd like. To really drive this whole thing home, let's make another data module and use that as the input to our model for training. All we'll do is go up to the data module that we defined earlier, copy it, and paste it down here. We've already imported SciFAR 10 at the top of the file, as we saw earlier. So all I'm going to do is select all instances of MNIST in here and just replace it with SciFAR 10. I'll update the input size, which is going to be three channels now, and it's going to be 32 by 32 images. It's still 10 classes. Uh, I'll remove this normalization because that was specific to the MNIST data set. And we'll update this split size here to reflect the size of the SciFAR data set, which is 50,000 images in the train set. So if all goes according to plan, again, we could run this and then copy paste what we did earlier to train the model. and just update this to SciFAR 10. So now, if we run this, we'll see that we start training on the SciFAR 10 data set. And our data set specific things are stored completely separate from our model, so our model can accept any data module that is set up in this format. So um, I think this is a pretty good overview. If you have any questions, uh, we'll have this notebook inside the description so you can check it out. Uh, and for anything else, uh, just reach out to us. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.